Okay, good day. We're Dr. Ron here with the September 9th cybersecurity update. And if I'm looking over at this screen, my apologies. <laughs> anyway, this presentation is for educational training purposes. It's under the fair use laws. Information gathered here is from publicly available sources. There's no sensitive information divulged. I provide links, and those links are for your further research. Uh, if you're in an academic institution getting a degree or doing research, uh, of course, you'd have to comply with your formatting standards, whether it's APA, MLA, etc. Feel free to share this presentation. I do mention Higher Vista here. That's a site I started, started many years ago for content, sharing out information. Also, like this content. It kind of gives me a gauge about doing this work with you. Uh, be wary of others who do post links in the comments section. I don't post links in the comments section. I'll post links up in the content area. Next, we have several topics today. The Mariah variant, MuBot, botnet is, is exploiting D-Link router vulnerabilities. Second, new cyber espionage group surfaces following attacks on mostly Asian targets. Third, North Korean hackers are deploying new magic rat malware in targeted campaigns. Fourth, Iranian cyber attack results in political discord. Fifth, recently passed CHIPS bill has ma a manufacturing gotcha. Sixth, Final Fantasy 14 players are targeted by QR code phishing. And finally, number seven, the FBI warns of Vice Society ransomware attacks on school districts. First, the Mariah variant, MuBot, botnet is exploiting D-Link router vulnerabilities. And if you look on this page, there's one, two, three, four vulnerabilities noted from all the way back to 2015 to the current one, CE 2022-289-958. All of those have a 9.8 or a 10.0 score out of 10 point possible. So that's a pretty prevalent and much needed set of patches here if you have a D-Link router. So let's look at uh, uh, how this is actually designed and let's take a look at how this is executed. The compromised device is compromised by one of these four CVE vulnerabilities. The compromised device then executes a download a request. The request pulls the binaries from the remote host. That is then launched in the compromised device. The compromised device then makes communication contact with the command and control, the C2 server, receiving its instructions from the C2 server. And fourth, it launches an attack based on the C2 command. The bottom line is customers of D-Link appliances are highly recommended to apply patches and upgrades released by the company to mitigate potential threats. Number two, cyber espionage group surfaces, a new one following attacks on mostly Asian targets. A previously unknown cyber espionage group has been using undocumented tools to go after high-profile Asian companies and local government governments. Researchers with ESET, an endpoint security company, said on September 6th, a few days ago. The researchers dubbed the new cyber espionage group as Warrock and said it's been active since at least 2020 when it targeted an East Asian telecom, a central bank in Asia, Southeast Asian maritime firm, and other public and private targets. So it's looking for the high profile ones. In late August, joint research from Proofpoint PwC Threat Intelligence exposed a Chinese effort to gather information on global heavy industry manufacturers and other targets associated with the activity in South China Sea. So there's an implication in this write-up that this group, Warrock, is being supported by the Chinese government. Again, there's a lot of funding, if you will, that is necessary for groups to do the exploitation. They need a research group, they need someone to cut the code, perhaps some testing, and then the deployment aspects as well. Again, Russian defense entities have also been targeted by Chinese hackers in recent months, particularly in the wake of the Russian Ukraine invasion. According to ESET, back to the ESET, the group employed at least three customized tools, the C++ loader, PowerShell backdoor, and a loader that uses steganography to create payloads to execute. Warrock is a cyber espionage group that develops its own tools as well as leveraging its ex existing tools. And that makes sense. They also try to hide uh, their footprint when they're attacking, which makes sense as well. Number three, North Korean hackers deploying new magic rat malware in targeted campaigns. A prolific North Korean nation-state actor, we've talked about the Lazarus group before, has been linked to this new variant called Magic Rat. Previously, unknown piece of malware is said to have been deployed in victim networks and initially breached uh, via success. While being a relatively simple rat capability-wise, it's built with the recourse 
to the QT framework, essentially hiding the anti-forensics piece of QT framework that makes it harder for attackers to be tracked. And that's one of the common items that attackers will do, bury their footprints, if you will. Like other umbrella collectives, when the when Niti, that's how the state-sponsored hacking collective has spin-off groups such as Blumeroff and Andriel, which focuses on specific types of attacks and targets. And in fact, if you think of North Korea as having a collective of hacking groups that they sponsor, they're going to logically divide them into departments. One of the groups, the Blumeroff subgroup, is focused on attacking foreign financial institutions and perpetuating monetary theft. And North Koreans have been very good at doing that. Andriel is devoted to its pursuit of slamming against South Korean organizations and businesses. So Magic Rat is part of everyone's tool set in the North Korean environment. It's capable of launching additional payloads, very much like the C2C command and control uh, environment that we talked about earlier. And it also uses uh, GIF technology, steganography, to hide its payload as well. Next is Iranian cyber attack results in political discord. Again, more uh, politics today than cybersecurity, but cybersecurity is used as a political leverage. Albania a NATO country now, uh, severed diplomatic its diplomatic relations with Iran on Wednesday and kicked out its diplomats after a cyber t attack in July uh, that it blamed on the Islamic Republic. Quote, this is from the U.S. State Department. This extreme response is fully proportionate to the gravity and risk of the cyber attack that threatened to paralyze public services, erase digital systems, and hack into state records, steal government internet access, electronic communications, and stir chaos and insecurity in the country of Albania. The U.S. said it concluded, after weeks of investigation, that Iran was behind the, quote, reckless and irresponsible July 15th cyber attack. The U.S. will take further action to hold Iran accountable. So we'll see how that unfolds, nation state against nation state, using cyber attack to leverage their cause, if you will. Next one online, number five, recently passed CHIPS bill. I think it's finally passed, and that's a good for us. But it has a manufacturing gotcha, which I don't think is such a bad idea. This August, Joe Biden, U.S. President, signed into law $280 billion to high-tech manufacturing and scientific research, that large umbrella, amid fears that the U.S. is starting to slip behind its te te technological edge to China. Tech companies that receive federal funding will be barred from building advanced technology facilities in China for 10 years. Uh, the Biden admins has said. The guidelines were unveiled as part of a $50 billion plan aimed at building up local semiconductor. So semiconductor is a chunk of the 280. And we can see with the Taiwan-Chinese conflict in that whole domain that that's really a big area of concern. It, it comes, so the bill comes as business groups have pushed for more government support in an effort to reduce reliance on China Again, 90% of the chips, that's the estimate, are produced in Taiwan. And with China being at the doorstep, is it one? We're going to be implementing the guardrails to ensure that those who receive chips funds cannot compromise national security. They're not allowed to use this money to invest in China. They can't develop leading edge technologies in China for a period of 10 years. That's the guardrails. I think it's appropriate given the circumstances that we face. Okay, I switched cameras. Final Fantasy 14 players targeted by QR code phishing. We've seen this during the pandemic where uh, fishers, scammers were putting out QR codes on restaurant menus that led restaurant, restaurant patrons to bad websites. Anyway, same thing's happening here with Final Fantasy 14. It's a smash hit online role playing game, as many of you are aware. And here's a quote, as we have mentioned in the past, Again, this has kind of been a persistent issue. We have confirmed that certain individuals, hackers, are attempting to direct players to fake login websites, such as Square, such as uh, Twitter, etc., uh, by using these QR, QR codes, kind of scattered about, if you will. Here's the three areas, uh, one, two, three, listed in the bullet items. In-game chat to direct players to fake pages imitating Square, including the support center. Uh, the second one is a QR code in an image disguised as an official Twitter or a forum post. And a third one that was noticed, disguising as Final Fantasy IV gameplay video with a link to fake pages as part of the video or the description. Last but not least, FBI warns of Vice Society ransomware attack. Vice Society is a group. Uh, they proliferate ransomware and they're geared and focused on the 2020 
2023 academic year and schools, school districts. So FBI CISA and MSISAC have released a warning, if you will. And in the bottom line is the advisory provides network defenders, the sysadmin, the network engineers in these organizations, the K through 12 organizations, with indicators of compromise, IOCs, tactics, techniques, and procedures, TTPs, that the FBI observed. That would part and parcel of how the society, uh, Vice Society ransomware is being deployed. So by taking those notices and adhering to that security policy and best practices, it tightens up the attack vector, if you will. And we're at the end. References, a whole list of references. I'll provide these in the YouTube area for you. Also, please like the video. If you're getting something out of this content, please share it. If you need the PowerPoint slides, let me know. Keep in contact. I posted my LinkedIn, my email address as well. So you take care. Have a good day. Bye now.